Using the DNA collected from Desmond Miles' corpse, Abstergo Entertainment developed an initiative called the Sample 17 Project to explore the genetic memories of Desmond's ancestors to gather the material for the production of various Animus Omega products and feature films. The project was started with the ulterior motive of locating various precursor sites and pieces of Eden. In 2013, the company hired a research analyst for scouting the memories of one of Desmond's ancestors, Edward Kenway, a British privateer turned pirate, who later went on to become an assassin. In the early 1700s, after an attack on the ship he was aboard, Edward found himself stranded on a deserted island with an assassin. The man ran off into the jungle, after which Kenway chased him down and killed him. Among his possessions, he found a letter addressed to Duncan Walpole from the governor of Cuba, Lorena de Torres y Viala, promising him a reward for some maps he was carrying. Edward donned Walpole's robes, heard shots in the distance, and proceeded to investigate, leading him to a ship with its crew being held by British soldiers. Edward killed the soldiers and rescued a merchant named Steed Bonnet, later accompanying him to Havana. Having arrived in Havana, Edward, still posing as Walpole, met with Governor Torres and his associates, hoping to claim his reward. Edward learned of the existence of the Templar Order and a precursor site known as the Observatory, with the power to locate and monitor every person on Earth with a vial of blood. According to the old tales, the blood of a sage is required to enter the observatory. Afterwards, Edward was inducted into the Templar Order. Edward met with the Templars at the docks in the next morning to meet a sage named Bartholomew Roberts and escort him to the governor's mansion. During the journey to Torres' mansion, the group was attacked by assassins, allowing the sage to escape. Edward fought the assassins and managed to capture the sage. He later claimed his promised reward, but was unhappy with its quantity. Edward decided to free the sage and find out more about the observatory, hoping to make more money. However, as he snuck into Torres' mansion, he found his cell empty and scattered with dead bodies. While investigating the area, Edward was knocked out and identified as an imposter by the Templars. He was taken prisoner and locked up in one of the ships of the Spanish treasure fleet. Edward awoke to find himself in leg irons together with a fellow prisoner, Adewale. After freeing themselves, the men rescued the fleet's prisoners and stole a brig, which Edward decided to keep afterwards. He named his new ship the Jackdaw and made Adewale his quartermaster. Following this, the pirates set course for Nassau. After assembling a crew, he met Edward Thatch and Benjamin Hornigold, who took Edward out to sea to teach him how to plunder ships. He then met with James Kidd and devised a plan to rob a plantation. Edward and Thatch set out to acquire a galleon for Nassau's defence. The pirate assassinated its captain, the Templar Julian de Cass, and claimed his vessel for Nassau's defence and his island for himself. While exploring Edward's memories, the analyst was enlisted by IT head John Standish to hack computers secretly without Abstergo knowing. They hacked computers, anime, security cameras and servers around Abstergo Entertainment's Montreal facility in order to obtain information on Abstergo's actions for the assassins and pass it on to Rebecca Crane and Sean Hastings, who were routinely collecting it at Sean's coffee stand in the building's lobby, though the analyst wasn't originally aware of this. A few weeks later, Edward set course for Tulum, looking for Kid, who was expecting him in the assassin hideout. Upon mentor Al-Tabai's request, Edward navigated to a Mayan ruin to identify the return of a sage. Al-Tabai absolved Edward of the deaths of his fellow assassins in Havana, but exiled him from Tulum. Edward devised a plan to find Roberts and earn some money by using Torres as bait. He set out to Kingston, where he planned to tail Torres and Lawrence Prince, hoping to find the sage. He found Kidd trying to assassinate both men and stopped him, allowing them to escape. Edward then prepared to assassinate Prince after having promised Kidd he would do so. Suddenly, Kidd removed his bandana and reddened his lips with his blood, revealing himself to be a woman named Mary Reed. Edward found Prince and assassinated him, but Roberts appeared, holding Mary hostage. The sage managed to escape once again. While staying in Nassau, Edward witnessed the arrival of the Royal Navy and Woods Rogers, who came to offer the King's pardon to all pirates, and Hornigold and his men decided to accept it. After learning that Commodore Peter Chamberlain planned to destroy all the pirate ships in Nassau's harbour, Edward assassinated him and escaped Nassau with Charles Vane. During a confrontation with the Royal Navy, Thatch was killed, and Edward barely managed to escape. He also learned of a ship called the Princess, aboard which he could find the Sage. Edward and Vane went after a slave ship to find information about the Princess, but due to Jack Rackham's mutiny, they were stranded on Isle Providentia. 
Edward was forced to deal with an insane Charles Vane and managed to leave the island on a ship that had arrived. After retrieving his ship and crew from Rackham, Edward travelled to Kingston to learn more about the sage's location. Edward learned that Bartholomew Roberts could be found on the island of Principe. Edward assassinated Josiah Burgess and John Cochrane, freeing pirates from a Portuguese camp along the way. With that, Edward finally gained the trust of Roberts, who in turn requested his aid. Edward met with Roberts to claim a set of vials from a Portuguese fleet. They managed to acquire the blood vials and Edward was promised a chance to enter the observatory. When meeting up with Roberts again, Edward was directed to assassinate Hornigold, who had tailed him. Edward informed Adewale of his plan of selling the observatory for the highest price. Adewale suggested informing the assassins instead so they could protect it, but Edward refused. Edward arrived at the observatory but was betrayed by Roberts and imprisoned in Port Royal. Present day. Eventually, the hacking activity was discovered at the same time that the company's chief creative officer, Olivier Garneau, went missing. In response, Olivier's stand-in, Melanie LeMay, reluctantly imprisoned the analyst and several other employees in bunkers in the basement, where they would continue their work until the hacker could be identified. Subsequently, John raised the analyst's security clearance so that they could leave the bunker and instructed them to hack the main server in order to cover their tracks. Unbeknownst to the analyst, following John's instructions activated a program designed to transfer Juno's consciousness into another body. Unfortunately, Juno was not yet strong enough to maintain a physical form, and this aspect of the plan failed, much to John's rage. The analyst then resumed exploring Edward's memories. John then entered the analyst's bunker while they were using the Animus and revealed himself to be a sage, a reincarnation of Ata. He attempted to poison the analyst, weakening them enough that their body could host Juno. However, he was shortly caught and killed by Abstergo security guards. The analyst later woke in Melanie's office, where she apologised for imprisoning them. She claimed that while she originally believed them to be the hacker, information recovered from John's computer proved that he was responsible. After Melanie revealed the completed trailer for Devils of the Caribbean as a token of goodwill, the analyst was allowed to return to work. Edward was led into the trial of Mary Reed and Anne Bonney. They warned that they're pregnant, so their executions are postponed. Four months after the trial, Edward was locked in one of Port Royal's gibbets. Atabe freed Edward, returned his weapons and requested his aid to free Mary and Anne. Along the way, Edward found Jack Rackham's skeletal corpse in a gibbet and a delirious Charles Vane in a cell. In a nearby cell, Anne shouted for help from the guards because Mary's gotten ill after childbirth. Edward helped Mary to reach outside, but she passed away. After suffering the loss of Mary, Edward tried to drown his sorrows, which resulted in a disturbing dream. Adewale woke Edward up on the beach afterwards. Edward then set sail for Tulum to meet with the assassins and make amends. After aiding the assassins with a Spanish invasion, Edward earned their trust. Edward, now allied with the assassins, set out to Kingston to assassinate Rogers. Then Edward sailed to Principe to kill Roberts. He attempted to assassinate Torres in Havana, but found his victim to be a decoy, El Tiburon. He killed him and set out for the observatory, where Torres would be. Edward began to make his way towards the observatory, freeing its guardians as he came across them and killing the Spanish soldiers. Edward found and assassinated Torres, returned the observatory to its dormant state, and received a letter, learning of his wife's passing. Edward met with Atabai and Adewale at Great Inagoa, awaiting the arrival of his daughter. He passed on his manor on Great Inagoa to the assassins for their new base, and met his daughter, Jennifer Scott, for the first time. Edward then sailed to England with Jennifer. Sometime later, Edward remarried and conceived a son, Haytham Kenway. The post credit scene shows Edward, Jennifer and Haytham attending the Beggar's Opera at the Theatre Royal. Thank you for watching that everybody. If you liked this video and you want to know more Assassin's Creed lore and backstory and recaps and everything, then subscribe to Jam Punch because I'm going to be releasing a brand new Assassin's Creed video every single week. My name is George, this is Jam Punch and I will see you next time.